Throughout my artistic study and journey, perspective has always been a subject that I'm not comfortable with because it's almost like math. It feels dead and too binary. And when you are doing it wrong, someone will call you out. But what do you really need to know about perspective, and how does it fit into a watercolor painting? Let's put things in perspective today. Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Perspective can get very technical and complicated, especially when you're looking at something like a technical drawing by an industrial designer. It's very impressive to look at, but that takes a lot of time to do, and it's going to be an overkill for our typical scenery painting. So, without going too technical. Perspective is simply showing what you see in the three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional surface, so that your painting looks natural and believable. The general idea of perspective is having a horizon line, which is also your eye level. That's the farthest distance from you. Everything you see can be above, below, or at the eye level. Now the subject can also be close or far away from you. This is when perspective can help to properly show the distance between an object and your eyes, and we can do this with the help of a vanishing point. The vanishing point is a point that two parallel lines converge into the distance. Now lines don't really exist in the real world. It is a visual concept for us to interpret the 3D space. So when we draw a box like this. We are simply trying to interpret this three-dimensional object on a two-dimensional surface. One thing that's very important to understand is that vanishing point is actually object-based, which means that every object you see has different vanishing point. For example, if you have a cube facing you like so, you have a single vanishing point, and that's also known as one-point perspective. As soon as you rotate it to the side, you now have two vanishing points. And when you have multiple objects that are facing different directions, you have multiple vanishing points. So in essence, the horizon line is viewer-based, and the vanishing point is object-based. Hope I haven't lost you yet, but I share with you all this so that you can understand the three tips that I'm going to share with you. Number one, find simple scenery to work with. As I mentioned, vanishing points are object-based. So if you pick a scenery with objects facing all different directions, you are asking for trouble. Instead of picking a complex scenery like that, select a scene with a simple perspective. This is why a straight tree scenery is typically preferable because all of the buildings are built along the road, so they pretty much all share the same vanishing point. This will be much easier to manage and to simplify. Number two, remember your eye level. Watch the scale and placement. One of the most common mistake I see in students' work when it comes to perspective is the scale and placement. It is very, very important to remember what your eye level is because everything is relative to your eye level. For example, if you stand on a street that around the same height as everyone else, most of the figures in the scene will share your eye level. Typical sedan car are about the height of your chest to shoulder, so it should reflect that in your painting. This means that no matter how far or how close, you won't be seeing that much top of a car at all. Even if you are painting a scenery that has no figure, you can still check the scale of the object in a scene compared to a person. Everything in a scene is human scale. When you draw a house with a door and windows, think about how the person fits there. Number three, observe often so you can eyeball things more accurately. While I'm not against anyone doing a very complete. Technical drawing for a painting. Chances are, this is not how you want to draw for painting. Otherwise, you'll be going to spend a lot of time and energy on the drawing. You are going to be very tired by the time you get to the painting. So, what I usually do is draw more intuitively while keeping perspective in mind. To do that, you will need to observe often, study the scenery, and draw often. Get the perspective in your muscle memory. That being said. 
I still make some mistake from time to time when I am being too careless, so I should do more practice as well. Okay, so I'm going to do a street scenery painting, but this time I'm going to focus more on drawing so I can go over some of the point I made earlier. If this is the first time you're here and you like my content, please like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to get notification whenever there's a new video. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so for the drawing, let's start off with the horizon line, which is somewhere around here. Not exactly in the center because it's going to look too stiff, but we do want enough space for the foreground, for cars and things like that. But we need even more space for the buildings, trees and stuff above our eye level. So what we're going to do right now is just to block out some big, simple shapes. I'm not going to worry about the perspective just yet. What I'm doing right now is just trying to figure out a big major shape. We need to figure that out before we go into the perspective. Some palm trees on the side. Background mountains. And buildings and stuff. Okay, so here we have our finishing point, and this is where all the buildings and stuff are going to converge into because this is a straight road. So everything is going to that single vanishing point. Now it's important to know that road doesn't end at the vanishing point because it's usually stopped by a crossroad or some buildings and some background and stuff. This road also goes up a little bit, but let's make it a little bit simpler by just make it a straight row instead of a rope that going upwards. So anyways, here's our vanishing point and let's draw a few lines. This line is probably where our curb is. And let's do a figure over there, right at our eye level. So again, the figures that shares the same height with you usually share the same eye level as well. So if there's a figure behind that's further away, the heads remains in the same position and height, but they are a little bit smaller. So same thing here, the figure that's even further away still shares the same eye level. Unless you have a very tall figure like an NBA player or something, or a child that's a lot shorter than you are, they are mostly going to be the same eye level. Now let's draw a car right next to the curbside. So like I stated, the typical sedan car is around the chest height of an adult. So here is a car. Let me just draw that out very loosely. Again, it's a good habit to keep your pencil on the paper just to keep the line flowing. So a very simple car, we might see a tiny little bit of the side, but it's very close to the vanishing point, so we're not going to see that much at all. The closer things are to the vanishing point, the closer it is to the center of your vision. So you're not going to see a lot of side or the top of the object. So let's do another car, which is the same depths with the figures on the back. So use that height as reference as well. And again, you won't see much top at all since it's very close to the eye level. You can still see a little bit, just not that much. So let's start to draw the building. Now any side that is facing left, the top and the bottom edges are going into the vanishing point. They are actually the parallel lines, parallel edges that's converging into the vanishing point. So that's what we're going to do. And again, we're drawing in one point perspective because this is a single road going into the distance. So, so the left side of the building is following the perspective while the side that is facing us are just going to be straight up rectangle shape and whatever it is. Very important to remember include the things below your eye level, okay? The building is not going to build right on top of the horizon line. There are things underneath your eye level. So make sure you include that in. Here we draw the curbside. 
So the building is built next to the sidewalk, the curbside where people can walk and things like that. So I draw two buildings and now let's draw a third building. The fourth building, this is actually going to be a little bit taller just to make things a little bit more interesting. Again, the side facing wall is going into the perspective. So without going into any details, I am just drawing a couple boxes that's going into the perspective and I eyeball most of them. So this might not be the most accurate drawing ever, but as long as it's looking natural, that's enough for me. Now we got our basic primitives down. Now we can start to draw some architectural details. Again, I'm eyeballing most of these. This drawing is going to be for the value study anyway, so I'm going very loose at those. So I'm again eyeballing most of the details and stuff and just keep the perspective in mind. As long as they are following the same perspective, they should look okay. Of course, there are ways to make a more accurate drawing. I do share that in my online course, but the important thing about knowing these knowledges are that you can make an educated guess and you can eyeball it a little bit more correctly when you are doing drawings. So here I'm going to start to draw some trees. Now trees with the same height is also following the perspective as well. So here I draw a shorter tree, but if I would draw another tree that's the same height, it should follow the perspective as well. So let's say, let's use the height of this tree, bring that forward, and we can draw another tree that's closer to us with the same height. Now we can draw a shorter tree like these, but keep in mind the tree has perspective as well. So anything you can do to help out to reinforce the perspective, that's always good. So let's draw the street light. So let's establish the height of our first street light. So let's say this is how tall the street light is, and we can use the perspective and draw every other street light in a distance that's sharing the same height. So this goes out and that's where the light is. And then again, we grab the height of the street light and follow the perspective. And now we can do a second one into the distance. Draw another line for the base and we'll use the perspective to figure out two more into the distance. Now let's draw another car that is closer to us and we will use this car as our reference. So what we're going to do is to draw a rectangle right next to the car, approximately the same size, very loosely like so. So they are right next to each other and then what we're going to do is to use the perspective to pull that rectangle forward. So I'm going to use the vanishing point and the four corner of that rectangle to bring that shape forward. Now here we have the same rectangle, but a lot closer to us. So now we have a basic scale and placement for this car in the foreground. And I'm just going to loosely draw that out using that rectangle as a reference. Of course, I can start with a box and everything, but I'm just gonna eyeball most of it. So here we have a car in the foreground. So we got two cars and there are a bunch of cars in the distance on the right side of the street. So for the most part, I'm just going to eyeball them. So as long as they are just regular sedan, your height will never go above the eye level. And I usually just start off by drawing 
a very loose rectangle as a size and placement reference and I'll just draw the car very loosely. Now here on the right, there is a truck. Now if we're using the same depths as our figures on the left, then this truck needs to be a lot higher. So the top needs to be above the eye level. So we got the back of the truck and we'll just eyeball the side of the truck. Now here most of the scenery is done, so I'm just going to do some foreground element on the left. The very tall palm trees and the street light. I know this palm tree is way too tall for that distance, but I do that just to make the composition looks a little bit better. And I also don't want the palm tree to be in front of the figure. And here is the drawing. Very loose, but it gets the point across. Okay, so let's do a very quick value study with this drawing. So since the focus of this video is the drawing, I'm going to go through value study and the painting rather quickly. But as you can see, the purpose of the line drawing is merely a reference, more like a guide for my painting. So when I'm painting value study, I know exactly where I need to paint. And if there's places where I didn't put the drawing in, I have a pretty good idea just by referencing the lines and things around it. And as complicated as all these buildings and their perspectives are, the value grouping is actually quite simple if you know how to simplify them. So again, if you squint your eyes a little bit, a lot of the shadow shape and the light shape just kind of merge. And that's one of the reasons why I picked this specific scenery because the big shapes are actually quite simple and powerful once you get the perspective down. So the dark side of the building connect to the dark side of the car, the figure and the palm trees on the left. And that also goes down into the shadow in the foreground, the shadow that cast by the buildings that's outside the frame to the left. And now the first wash is dry. We are going in and painting some darker shapes. So the street light and the palm trees and also some darker color of the buildings, darker details on the car, like the windshield, the wheel, the bottom of the car, and so on. Once we figure out the major shape, we paint the middle value. When we put in the dark value, it's going to make the painting more complete and it's going to bring more contrast. So some more dark details in the distance, cars, it's a big UPS truck. And I started to paint the figures. The foreground palm tree on the side. I add some more palm tree in the distance. And now the foreground car. In the finished painting, I actually moved that car to the left a little bit. I don't want that car to be dead center. And I'll just do a glaze to make the building, the dark side of the foreground building a little bit darker. And also make the foreground shadow a little bit darker as well. And here's a finished value study. And as you can see, when the paint is in, all the line drawing seems to fade back quite a bit and you don't look at all the lines and stuff anymore. You just look at light and the dark and the shape. So the perspective is really just a guide for you to paint a natural looking painting. Okay, so let's take a look at our final color painting. So I'm just going to skip the drawing part because I already show you. However, I did make the drawing just a little bit more finished because it is for a finished painting after all. But the process is mostly going to be the same. And I made the car in the foreground a little bit pushed back and then a little bit to the left. So it's not going to jump out too much in the front in the center. So the first wash, the color of the light, which is the white of the value study. I've been going over that many, many times. And if you've been watching my video, I hope you get that already. 
So I'm just painting the color of the light, painting the sky. Try to put a little bit of the cloud in the background. And I try to skip a little bit just to leave a little bit of incidental highlights in the background. So there can be some suggestive details in the background. And I continue to wash painting the road. And for the first wash, don't be afraid to just paint over different shapes. A lot of the shape that are going to be darker so you can easily paint them over. You only need to leave out white if you are intended for them to be white. So here's the second wash. I start with the background. Start with the background mountains and the trees. Get some wet on to wet colors in. And I just expand that shape out, connect that colors, connect that wash into the buildings, the background buildings, the trees, and the dark side of the building, which is the side that is facing us. Actually, the light source is from the left. So the left side of the buildings are getting lit by the sun, while the side that are facing us are in the dark. So connecting the shape as much as possible, but try to add some color variation when you are at it. So you can change the color while you are painting the wash. So sometimes it's better to pre-mix your color on the palette. You can also work a little bit more spontaneously, but you need to mix your color fast. The yellow tree is actually a trap. It looks very, very bright, but the value is actually closer to a middle value. So I just paint them over. And painting some architectural details on the buildings. Again, I'm eyeballing almost all of the architectural details and stuff, and they might not be most prospectively accurate. But again, as I stated, as long as it looks natural, it should be good enough. We are painting a loose, believable watercolor, not a architectural technical drawing and painting. So while it is important to understand perspective, you don't have to stress yourself out, try to make everything super accurate. Starting to paint into the card, the windshield, the wheel, and the dark side of the car. And this big UPS truck. So connect it back to the background and now onto the figure. This place is Old Town Pasadena. I spent a lot of my college year here because this is where I went to my art schools, Art Center College of Design. It's a beautiful city. I really love Old Town. It's like a usual dating spot for me and my girlfriend who is my wife now. So there's a lot of good memories here. I visit the place last winter, which feels like a lifetime ago because what happened this year. And this year during winter break, we probably not able to do any traveling as well. So it's good to visit the place again in my painting. And this is always a blessing when you are able to do a painting of the place that special for you and this place is definitely special for me and when i'm doing the painting all the memories and stuff just flood back into my mind and makes it a very very enjoyable painting for me so now i'm painting the palm trees on the left the very tall big palm tree again really really big actually way too big for that distance but again i don't want to paint the palm tree in front of the figure so again, this might not be the most accurate thing ever, but it looks good in the painting, so I don't really mind. So this is actually the third wash of the painting, so I'm starting to paint some darker shapes. So I'm painting the dark side of the figure, the hair, the shadow, and adding some more darker contact shadow underneath the figures. So once we paint the dark shape in, the value range is complete and we're going to feel the contrast and the light just pops. It's 
or painting some street lights and signals. So the brush I'm using is a Skoda Perla. It's a synthetic nylon brush. It holds its point really well. And it's very snappy too, so it's great to paint some hard surface and some smaller details. Painting the brake light. Those reds are actually pretty dark because the lights are not on. So they are actually in the darker side of the car. So those reds are actually darker. Again, it's very important that you really observe the scenery and really look at what value it is because sometimes we have the perception that certain things are pretty bright, pretty light, but actually the values are quite dark. So don't just paint what you think it is, really observe and understand what you're looking at and then paint that. So I'm painting the trees, the palm trees across the street. and some darker details on the buildings. Adding a little bit hints of the windows. And again, most of those windows, I just eyeball them in. And as long as they're loosely following their perspective, it's going to look okay. We are almost done with the painting. Just filling out some more details and stuff. And the buildings on the right, the dark side is a little bit too light, so I'm just making it a little bit darker so that white truck actually pops out a little bit more. Paint the street light. There's some more dark details here and there. And here I'm just going to define the curbside a little bit more. So give it that curbside, some red, just to make it look a little bit more complete. And there you have it. I hope you like this painting. I definitely really like how it turns out. It really gives that sunny California vibe. Perspective can feel technical and scary, but as long as you think about where everything is in relation to you, things should make sense. Of course, observation and practice are the keys. So let's keep practicing together. Thank you for watching this week's video. Remember to like and subscribe. You can also visit my website at cafewatercolor.com to download my fast track watercolor PDF guide and bonus videos. I'm Eric from Cafe Watercolor. See you next time.